Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Happy Wednesday y'all and happy fall. I hope it's the weather starting to turn wherever you are and thank you all so much for being with us today. Today we are going to take the autumn leaves that we made last week, actually littler ones, and we are going to turn them into some really fun fall pins. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that and what you need along with what you can download to help. So we're looking forward to doing that with you today. We're going to be needle felting something that we wet felted in a little different way. So, so glad you all are here. I want to say hi to some folks. Hi to Susan out in Iowa. Hi to Peg right here in Texas and Brenda in California. Donna also in California. So glad you're here. Always here with us. Um, Marilyn is in Canada and Lori's in Ohio. Thanks y'all so much for joining us. So this is an interactive hour-ish. Please participate in the chat. You'll see people are saying hi and where they're from. And if you participate in the chat or our replay watchers comment down below, you get entered to win prizes. And we have two winners from last week. So uh, from last week, our winners are from the commenters after the live show, Audrey Barthel and Patricia Brenner, who both followed along with our wet felting autumn leaves. So you guys get to choose either a wet felting autumn leaves kit or a fall needle felt gnome kit, whichever you want. Just go to the website, hit the contact us, and let us know you won and tell us which prize you would like. Okay, so the fairies are here with me all lined up with lots of goodies for you to consider for today's project. And the first up is the very magical fairy Anne. Yay! Hey y'all, thank you so much for spending this time with us. We got a really fun tutorial for you. We are going to work today with our MC1 batting. And MC1 is fantastic for needle felting. Plus we have over 90 colors. <laughs> so no matter what your project is, we got you covered. Uh, this right here, if you want a one click option to add a ton of pretty colors to your studio, we suggest this guy. This is our MC1 fall goodie bag. It comes with 12 colors. The colors in this round are Honeysuckle, Mandarin, Shire, Hot Orange, Chestnut, Cafe Au Lait, Slate, Cotton White, Wintergreen, Chimney, Evergreen, Pomegranate, and grape. So this is our MC1 fall goodie. It's available on our website under the wool section. And if you want to get the colors that we're specifically using for today or some other colors or other items we might suggest, check the link in the description. You're going to go to a page where a bunch of magic <laughs> is displayed. <laughs> so next up, Fairy Angela. Yay! Yay! Hello everyone. Um, so if you're wanting to add some more fall colors to your MC1 palette, these are some of our favorite MC1 colors. Um, we're all kind of obsessed with fall here. So this first color is Mahogany, Cafe Au Lait, Cinnamon Brown, True Olive, Clay, and Slate. And it's be perfect for any fall project. Up next is Fairy Alyssa. Woo! Hello everyone, I'm so excited to share with you these colors I picked out that I thought would go perfect with today's project. This is MC1 Fiber in Black Onyx, Cobalt, Caramel, Chimney, Chestnut, and Pale Peach. And the minimum half ounce quantity would be perfect for this project today. Up next is Fairy Kayla. Yay! <laughs> hey everyone, get my soul position here, Fairy Kayla here. So since we're going to be using a wool felt background, I wanted to share some of my favorite felt sheets. We offer these individually as well as a pack, and this is our fall fun pack here. So we've got red, orange, lemon, leaf, berry, and violet. Perfect for, for fall or really, it's I love rainbows, so it's, it's great. <laughs> and you can find these on the wool felt tab on our website. And since we're making a hedgehog today, I figured I'd give you guys a hedgehog joke. <laughs> what do you, wait, 
What do you call a hedgehog that doesn't eat bugs? What do you call a hedgehog that doesn't eat bugs? A hegetarian. Oh. <laughs> All right, Marie, I'll turn it back over to you. <laughs> that was a pretty good one. <laughs> I just see a big round of hearts for all the fairies. This is our crew. They make everything that we ship off to you. They fill your orders, answer the phone, answer emails, tell us good jokes. Kayla also uh, has been dyeing our locks for the last year, and they're all just fabulous. I love having them here, and thank you all for being here, too. So if this is your first show, please let us know that. Uh, let us know it's your first time in the live chat, and our friends will welcome you, and we're so glad you're here. Uh, so we are Living Felt. We're based in Central Texas. We're here Monday through Friday and also Saturday, like 9 to 4 and then 10 to 4 on Saturdays. You can call us. We're glad to help. And uh, today, let's look at what we're going to be making. These are our little pins. Um, and these are just a few ideas. I mentioned that I wanted to get you thinking outside the box. And for this project, I think um, this is kind of an outside the box uh, project. So I'm gonna show you how we make these pins with one and maybe just a couple shapes. Um, and I can't wait to see what else you come up with, maybe even what other shapes you come up with. I had to stop because I knew we could only do so much on the show, but I definitely had more ideas already for these guys. So for those who weren't with us last week, let's look just really quick at what we used um, and where we came from. We started with a palette of merino top in these colors and a little bit of pre-felt. Uh, this is our Bordeaux PFM pre-felt and then some luscious luster fibers, a lot of viscose, some Tessa silk. I think the new kits are now coming with um, bamboo because we've, ran out, we've run out of this color, marigold. But we use those to easily and quickly make a piece of felt fabric in these lovely autumn colors. And it really is random. This is the exact piece that we made together, a little shorty half piece. And then right here is an example of some of the leaves we made together. So um, you can cut these leaves out. You can use them for use them for uh, dinner napkins. We've hung them off branches. We've made garlands from them over the years. Um, you can make pins right from them. And I wanted to show you a way you could use them in even um, different different configurations. So real quick, what I just showed you is available in a kit if you want to get that, but you can also shop everything a la carte and that you can get to um, that from the link in the description today. Just get back to our website and look under the learn tab if you're finding your way there by yourself and you'll go to learn and then Wooly Wednesday and you'll get there to be able to shop products from any episode. Before today, we are giving you a free pattern. The, uh, you can get also to the landing page for this, uh, a free pattern for today's projects. And so you're gonna wanna grab it. What we've done is we've, we're gonna work with fabric our, just our wet felted fabric, not already from the cut leaves, because we want to cut them either custom or even smaller, depending on how you want to go about it. So you can grab this PDF for free right now, and uh, in it you'll find, you'll, we, we've been putting these little QR codes and links if you want to jump to a particular class. And then, um, last but not least, just a couple of things, you're gonna get some patterns and I'm gonna show you how to work with that. And we've also taken last week's leaf patterns and given you a few different sizes. So grab the PDF, it's free right now. I don't know if it'll be forever free, but it's free right now, so grab that and um, you can use it to do what we're gonna do. So let's look at these guys real quick and I'll show you uh, how we get there. This is my little lady pin, my owl pin, and my hedgehog pin. And all of these guys are built on sheets of wool felt. I brought in some really fun fall colors. We use 100% wool felt. 
And from these pattern, you are going to cut out, it looks like an apostrophe to me. I just kind of made this up because I wanted to make the hedgehog originally. And once I made the hedgehog, I came up with a few other ideas. And like I said, I think there's lots more you can do. So all I do is you can cut this out and then trace it on your felt sheet and then cut out yourself out some little apostrophes to get started. I am going to be watching your um, comments as we work together today and your questions and do my best to answer your questions, so please do ask them. Um, and I see uh, Susan says she can't find the PDF. Susan, scroll down when you get to the landing page of the today's show on our website. Scroll down and you'll see all the products and you'll see these little guys, uh, these little pins down below as one of the products and it's a free PDF. You're just going to add it to your shopping cart. So before you do that, I want to tell you whenever you get a PDF from us, whether it's paid or free, you need an account. That way you have some place to go back to and grab your downloads. And all downloads have either a seven or 14 day limit to download them. So get it. Once you download it, you'll get an email with a link. And if you just missed that for some reason, log into your account, go to your orders, open that order, there will be the link. It's really pretty easy. So um, please do go help yourself to that. All right, so for these guys, the first thing we want to do is cut out our apostrophes, and then we're going to get our core wool. It doesn't matter uh, whether you have the batting or the roving. Um, get yourself a little bit of core wool and these projects don't take much. I'm just all about little projects this year. Um, okay, I think we're doing good. All about little projects this year. So cut out your core wool, I mean <laughs> cut out your apostrophe and then we're going to needle felt wool onto our apostrophe and that's just our core wool. I think it was Alyssa who showed you the colors that I'm working with here. So I have Core wool won't take much, your scrappiest, ugliest, whatever core wool you have. And then I'm going to be working with, this might be pale peach, pale peach or peachy, maybe some latte, caramel, chestnut, chimney, cobalt, and black. Those are the colors I chose and you can use whatever you want. Starting with your apostrophe, the first thing we want to do is fill it up with some core wool. Use whatever felting needles you like for this project. Oh, and for today, I'm using our little uh, pumpkin house as my pin cushion, and I'm gonna start with a 38 triangle to fill in my apostrophe. And if I wanna make him, should I make them uh, posing towards each other? Let's see, oh no, mine go the same direction. So here we go. We just wanna fill this up with core wool. And so take some core wool, and just kind of fill in what would be the space for your apostrophe. Let it go over, um, but what you want is 100% coverage of your apostrophe, and I like just a tiny bit of mounding. So a little bit here, and we're going to just needle felt this down. Notice I'm not trying to attach it to the foam, I'm just trying to top my little felt bit with core wool. It doesn't require much finesse, this, uh, this process, right now. And just scoot your fibers where you want them. Would it help y'all if I get in a little bit closer? I can do that. I'll let these guys be up, up here. We'll put him right here so you can see him, and these guys right here. Okay. Rhonda says, so happy to catch you live. Hi, Rhonda. Rhonda is one of our BFFs, and I will tell you, we have something super fun coming, uh, a, little, a little special thing from Rhonda this year to share with you all. Mary says she can't wait to make these pins. I promise they're so much fun, Mary. So look, this is not hard, y'all. Uh, you just wanna kinda scoot all the wool in, and I'm using my 38 triangle, which is the most aggressive needle I'm using today. If you have something coarser, then so be it, but just try not to attach this to your foam. You can peel this up if you want. 
you just don't want to destroy your foam for something like this. Now what you're going to want to do is continue to needle felt this and add just as much as you want to start to give some body to your shapes. I'll show you my little lady from the side. See how she's slightly domed? So keep needle felting this and getting everything nice and flat adding wool where you want it. My hedge, uh, my hedgy is what we're going to make today and he doesn't really, he's about the same. I think they're about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, so the first thing you do is get all of your core wool in place and get it nice and flat. To clean it up, I'm using my 40 triangle, the green one, and just going around and tucking it to the sides. So just try and stay just to the edge of your just to the edge of your felt sheet. Is the core wool to make it puffy? Yes, uh, Karen, thank you for the question. The core wool is just to give it some volume. You could use your regular dyed wool if you don't have core wool, but core wool's just less expensive and helps build up a little body and a little base. Because I didn't want these things to just be flat. Um, on the felt. I wanted them to have a little dimension. So build up your core wool until you're happy with it and it doesn't really take much. Here's mine. So build it up a little bit, get it so it's nice and smooth and just goes to just the edge of your of your felt sheet here. It can stick over a little bit if you want but notice how thin that is. Then we're going to cover this with our dyed wool. So for hedgy, I chose caramel um, blossom, so she'll be definitely be making a hedgehog. So this is caramel, y'all. This is our MC1 batting. If you've never used it or if you have used it, this is what I'm holding right here is about the normal thickness of the bat. If we don't if we don't split the thickness. The goodie bags are thinner, but um, regularly you get a full thickness no matter how narrow or wide it is. This is what a full thickness looks like, and what's lovely about it is you can just peel it and get a nice thin layer off, and we really only need a thin layer for this, and we're gonna cover his little nose right here. Now, you can put this caramel underneath here also if you want, all the way to the edge, or you don't have to. It really doesn't matter, like on my owl I'll show you in a minute um, I didn't go all the way but we do want a hundred percent coverage so just tear your wool and stack it and my one little tip on these guys is you want the wool to extend all the way to your foam just about an eighth of an inch so lay your fiber down so that you cannot see the core wool underneath and let it extend over this will save you going back and fussing says the lady who spent a lot of time going back and fussing. So uh, just lay your wool so it extends. It will, with, when you flatten it out, it extends over about an eighth of an inch and so that you cannot see through it. So peek down there and make sure you can't see any white through the color that you're putting down. Now for this, the top layer, I always like to use my, um, oh, Susan says she got the thankful, not the PDF pattern. Susan, uh, it looks like we didn't fix that link. Um, please scroll down. Uh, oh, you know what? We need to fix that link. Let me see if, uh, if I can get an SOS here to Anne and have her uh, fix that link while we're still live um, so that we can get that fixed. It looks like we probably modeled it off that page. Okay, so I'm using, um, I'm using caramel here and just tacking this down. We want it to be nice and smooth. Okay, take your time here and then what you want to do is as you go over the edge, just hit the foam there because what we're going to do is kind of go around. I don't know if I can, maybe I can get this on the, um, on the detail over here so that when we go over this little edge here, we're going to just tuck it down into the foam so that you start to see the outline of your piece, just like that. and just continue to needle felt it all flat. Okay. Bear with me here, I'm gonna get Anne on, uh, Anne on, uh, Anne to come in so I can see if she can fix that link for us, okay. 
this is something to just take your time with. You can always go back and you know fuss with the details later, but getting things so that they're nice and smooth just takes time. Okay, so then peel it up after a time, get it all nice and flat, and the reason you want it to go over the edge here is so that we can cover this white perimeter. And on the uh, product for the um, for the PDF for today, I didn't link to the download. Let me see if I yeah. I think I uploaded it, but we didn't. <laughs> but we didn't link to it. Would you see if you can do that? For sure. Thank you. On the case. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Susan for letting us know that link was bad. Okay, so notice how we just used, we let that stick around and then we needle felt it. It doesn't matter if there's anything underneath here because we're gonna cover the back with black felt. So needle felt your way all the way around and get our little hedgy covered. Okay. Fiona says she missed about five minutes. Uh, Fiona, you can go back and watch it, but you haven't missed much. We've just covered our felt with core wool, made a little mound, uh, an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch thick maybe, and now we're covering it with caramel. And then just needle felt this stuff that's here on the back. This should be thin uh, and inconsequential, meaning like whatever folds over should not add a bunch of density. If yours is super thick, well then just get it to cover the end of this, uh, the white, wrap around, and then you can trim it off. It really doesn't matter. Um, oh, Bonnie says these would be great badge pulls. So what's, what's a badge pull? I can think of a badge holder. Um, but I don't know what a badge pull is, but that sounds really cute, like something you're wearing around your neck at the hospital or something. That sounds really, really cute. Um, for those who are new to needle felting, I can't understate the importance of getting this nice and fully smooth, such that when you rub your fingers across it, you aren't messing up the design. So avoid the fuzzies. If you want something to be voluminous, uh, to have shape, add volume and needle felt it flat, but don't leave it loose if it's gonna get rubbed up against um, or touched or whatever. So uh, this just takes a little time to keep going over that piece. Now for the fun part. Okay, so what you have in this, in this pattern that's a little different from last week, so here's our drawings just so you can use them as an idea, is we've given you some leaves that are smaller in size than our templates from last week. So these are close to 50%, this one might be 70%, and you can also just wing it, like just to have fun with these shapes as you cut them out. I'll put him over here. Have fun just cutting these leaf shapes out. So I chose a couple of oak leaf styles, like this one, so the back is just the Bordeaux. All I do is use an ink pen, and I showed you how to do that last week. I cut out the leaf shape that I want. So in this case, I'll just show you how I get there. Um, put it here. You can use chalks, and I'll show you uh, like a tailor's chalk in a minute, but I'm honestly just, I just sit and piece my way around the piece, uh, the piece, the piece as I work, and I just use an ink pen. Um, some people use a Sharpie, I've used Sharpies that you can tell, and I'm just going to draw on mine. Let me get my pen charged. I'm just gonna draw on mine as I go and get ink down so that I can see how I wanna cut it. And that is my suggestion. Yep, here we go. This You'll be able to see this just fine. So however you want to transfer that, you could um, print these out onto butcher paper and you know attach them with your iron if you want. For me, I'm piecing it as I go, and so I just wanna get that basic shape and then find my way around. So then I just cut it out of this side. Okay. Once you have your leaves cut out, and these are these is mostly cut out, so this one is cut out, this one is cut out, and this one is mostly cut out. And really feel, you know, there's no one right leaf to choose to make these. Find your way, do what you like. Everyone's gonna come up with something completely different. Decide how you wanna stack them. And um, I mean, he would almost be cute with two, and then you would need a little something 
in the middle. He might look really cute with two, now that I think about it, and not even need three. Originally, I was going to put three. So if you want to use like two, I'll show you how to do that. We'll do him with two. For something like this, um, where it, to get a leaf like this, if you don't have the exact one, I just cut out the shape and then start snipping it down to the shape I want. Just snip away at it and cut it till it fits how you want it. And fix the link, yay! <laughs> thank you, Anne. All right, and fix the link. So I apologize and thank you, Karen, for letting us know. Um, that's awesome. Okay, so Mandy says she likes the two. Donna says she likes the two. I love it. Um, Joan asked how the butcher paper works. So I'm gonna try and remember where we used the, the butcher paper. I think we used it uh, in, um, we, we used it in one of our patterns last year. So I'm gonna think about that. Okay, so here's, we just put two. Now pick the needle that works for you. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my 40 triangle. And we're just going to start needle felting right into our leaf. I felted this fabric just like we did together. Um, not too, you know, not too many, too many rolls. Uh, it's not so hard that it can't be attached. You could glue it or hot glue gun it if you want, but I think you'll be surprised at how nicely this stays. You could also hand stitch it if you feel better, like if you wanted to put some leaf uh, veining in here, you could hand stitch it to the bottom, but you might be surprised at how nicely you can needle felt this all down. And you can decide whether, you know, how these hug the, the bottom as you go. And anything that's not going to be showing will then really, really, really uh, tack it down. Tack it down um, really, really well. And just get it all needle felted. Now, if, on the parts that you're not seeing, you, meaning it's gonna be covered by another leaf, don't worry about the needle holes. To avoid too obvious of needle holes, get in there with your 42. And what you can also do is right underneath the leaf here where you have some volume, you can also kind of get under there and needle felt just underneath the surface to kind of tack it down underneath there. Now, could a little child rip this apart? Yes, but hopefully you're giving this to your sister, your mother, your friend, your grandmother, maybe selling it at a craft show, and it's not a child's toy. This is like a pin to wear on your winter coat or a badge pool, as someone says. Um, Karen got the link. Thank you, Anne. Very nice. Uh, Devin would love to add beads to her work. She thinks a black bead for the nose and eye would be cute. That's awesome. I am so non-patient with bead work. I wish somebody would teach me. <laughs> so that I would be more patient than I am. Okay, so we're gonna put two leaves here. I'm for this one. I'm gonna use my 42 and tack this down. I will have time today, I think, to also show you towards how we get the uh, owl done because that's a little bit different. Just a little bit different, not too much. Terry says she loves the colors, that's awesome. Lee says she's got a craft show coming in a few weeks and she's trying to finish all her started projects. That is a good goal. I get you. I always have lots of projects kind of on the list and started as well. Adina agrees with you, Devin, uh, on the beads and <laughs> Devin's ready to put her tree up. Oh, I had a friend who told me that her friend has had their tree up all year because they decided they just needed some Mary to kind of keep around. I love it. Okay, again, so I'm going underneath here a little bit. Look, don't worry about disorganizing your leaves, meaning a little bit on the end. If it's fairly well felted, it's gonna hold its shape and I think you're gonna be happy with how it looks. And then you can also rub over your needle marks a little bit once you uh, kind of get those into place. Now for these underneath sides, underneath here where you can kind of see uh, some of the color and I barely tacked my uh, caramel down but you see that I have some underneath sides that kind of show. What This is what I liked the, um, the chimney for. Chimney is just got, went so well for masking these little areas in here and so just all I do is just kind of stretch it out so that I have it as a little border just wherever I want to hide like what's in the in-betweensies, if you will, underneath your leaves. Um, 
some people are saying they have blank pages. Let's check. Open that PDF. It should be fine. Uh, okay, so we're just tacking, tacking in between to cover up our whites. So not using more dyed wool than we need to. This is a great, if anyone got the dabble box from us recently, this, this would be a great little dabble box uh, project, meaning it, the, dabble, the dabble sizes are very small, but you get a whole bunch of colors. And um, this, this takes very little wool. And I'm just tucking that, this little chimney down inside. Uh, Tammy says she's loving the hedgie. Marilyn says she got all the pages. That's good. Okay, good, 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 good. Thank you, Anne, for saving the day. Um, uh, Karen doesn't know how to find the pattern. Karen, um, go to our website right here. Um, click on the Learn tab under Learn. Go to Wooly Wednesday. You'll see the Wooly Wednesday 2021. Under there, you'll see a little picture for today's show and uh, go to that page. And then underneath that page, you're gonna see lots of products suggested for today's show. And this PDF might be towards the bottom. It just depends on how it sorts the stuff on the page. So just look for the little image of our three little characters here. And um, you can go over there and add that to your shopping cart. Again, you do need an account, so set up an account. We don't save your credit card. You won't need it for the pattern, but we don't save your credit cards. You just, it just saves your order history. Okay, here we go, look at that. So now we have our little hedgy kind of in the works. His nose is a little rough, but look how fast uh, these little guys can come together from the same shape of this apostrophe, which I think is kind of fun um, for his, knows uh, I don't have beadwork like Devin and some of y'all but I'm just going to use our black onyx for his little nose and his little eye pick your spot I mean I think there's lots you can lots you can do with this little character lots of fun you can have um, pick your spot drop it on there poke poke circle dot it's like your cootie shot circle dot circle dot quick quick way to get a little dot. Oh, I like that smaller eye. <laughs> I don't even know if it needs an eyebrow, but. Um, oh, Donna says she got her dabble box uh, for landscapes and is doing her second picture. That is so awesome. Um, so there's a question about the magnet. I'm gonna come back to that. It says, can you glue a magnet to the felt or does that stick? Uh, you can, it just depends on your, your kind of magnet that you're gonna choose. Let's see, I'm gonna see if this little one is gonna get an eyebrow. I mean, uh, I think I'm gonna put the little eye line just across the back maybe. How does that look? I want, I want almost like a little worried hedgy on this one. I need to go back and flatten my caramel so don't skip that, um, don't skip that part. I'm not going to, uh, let's see, I'm gonna finish the back of another one because I, it's really important that you get all this finished and smooth and that's what to spend a half an hour on or something when you're listening to a program or watching a program. In fact, I almost want him to get like a, okay, so do we want a black nose? Let's look at it on the table. I was just thinking of like a peachy nose. So do we want a black nose? Or I was thinking that a peachy nose might actually be different and cute. I just saw it right now in my in my head. I don't know, maybe the peachy nose is kinda cute. I'm gonna try that. And if I don't love it, I can cover it in black after. Maybe this one will get a little bow. Maybe she'll have a bow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> have fun, just play, have fun. It doesn't matter what direction you go. It doesn't matter what you do. Might even get a little blush on this one. So I'm gonna do a little blush. Uh, here's how I did my blush also on my little lady. So the lady is, I think this is pale, pale peach. I took a little mahogany and a little of the skin tone, a tiny bit, just bring them together. I think I'm gonna try a little, a little blush on the cheek of this one. So finish, refine, make it smooth. We'll see if we like a little blush on this hedgy. I'll scroll down, see what you guys got. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Oh, peach, you guys like it. Okay, a gold bow. Oh, that's a good idea. I could cut it. You could cut it out of your, out of your wool sheet if you want. Let's try a little blush. So this is what I do. I just take a tiny, 
a tiny little thin little bit and let's see if if like a little cheeky action works it's kind of cute where does it go I'm not the cutest I think it's kind of cute I'm just gonna so all I did was just drop it on there and then you want to tack it real real light so that it doesn't it doesn't bunch up too much on you you don't want like strong lines and if you don't like it just take it out before you go too far or if you want it to be a little bigger um, then make it bigger so this one needs refinement but let's look how we finish them so to finish them what I have is we're going to be putting on the back, we're gonna put some black felt, and these are these are the pin backs we have in the shop. Um, they have a little loop so that you could wear it as a necklace, and they also have a little holes so you can sew them. Owly is the same way, you can see him. And I will show you real fast how to make Owly, what's different about him. Let me show you that before we go too far. I, I cut the parts for you so you can see here's the owl, here's the back of owl, just like the back of, we're, we're all working with apostrophes here. But in the pattern for the owl, you can cut out just the top of his head, okay? Just, these are these are my really bad line drawings. <laughs> so cut out just the top of his head and trace it around your uh, felt. So I have a little one here. Here is uh, trace it around his felt. Now what I do before I attach it to his body is I'm going to put the white, which I just use core wool. I use the same stuff. I used core wool. I cut little two little circles of eyes out of a yellow part of my felt, so tiny, tiny circles cut out of the yellow, and needle felted it all onto this little head, and then a clip for his nose, I mean his beak, <laughs> and I trimmed it all with um, uh, chestnut. I just trimmed it all with the chestnut brown. I trimmed the eyes with the chestnut brown. I just trimmed this and the beak with the chestnut brown. You probably go a completely different direction. That's what I did. And then I needle felt this to the body. I like using a, for this part right here, I like using something that is the natural, this is the natural edge of the felt. So like, just so that it's not cut, use something from the natural edge so that this part just tapers down nicely. It's an idea anyway, that's what I did. That's what I did here. And then I just cut it um, uh, this way. I just cut it and then I'm gonna needle felt it on and trim it as you go. I just winged this, haha, -ha, just you know, made up a shape uh, to fit the body and then put him all together just like that. So that's just a suggestion, that's just an idea, but this is all just needle felted together and then we're gonna get to this part now where we put the backing on. So you want this whole part attached and then we put on one piece for the backing. So I'll set Mr. Owl aside and now for the backing, what you can do is we just really need to cover our apostrophe to cover our little hedgy. We're going to cover this guy. So to cover our apostrophe, I brought a tool. I have it somewhere. Oh, somewhere. Here it is. Okay. I'm using Taylor's chalk. I've also shown you uh, jelly pens. Uh, some people have some other kinds of chalk that they like to use. So just trace around your black, Taylor's chalk is a nice way to mark on black felt. Um, just use whatever you have to, to mark out your little shape here. And don't worry about it being perfect, perfect, but you know, it could be a little bigger if you want to show a perimeter, which I considered, like on the owl, I did a little bit of a perimeter. And on uh, the other guys, I didn't really want it to show prominently as part of the design. Okay. Oh, good. Brenda says she likes the organic edge of the wing. Um, yeah, it just, that way you didn't have a cut edge if you didn't want one. Um, thank you all for playing with me. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for always making Wednesdays really fun. And we, we, one of the really fun things is we always get to go and see what you all make from what we share because really you all, our community, are just amazingly brilliant. 
and we, we know that these are just ideas and you're going to take them some new direction which is always awesome okay there's our little piece I know that's kind of hard to see so maybe we get off of this now um, okay so here we just want to trim it up however you want it so that you're happy with it. Mine, this one feels a little bit bigger, so obviously I need to make it a little bit smaller. Now, I, um, so my pieces were made from my own hand drawings, and then um, then I had to like turn it into a thing. So that's what happens is I kind of start off on my own little trek, and then I have to turn this into something I can share. So that's why it's not a perfect match. Yours will be a better match. So I brought my hand drawings somewhere, <laughs> but this was all just drawn out on notebook paper, which is how I usually sketch out these little ideas, and then we have to turn them into a real thing that can be shared. All right, so here we go. We have our little apostrophe, and I am using just, for this part, um, Aileen's Tacky Glue. That works great for me. And... Um, I want to, what I'm going to do is put the glue onto here and not onto the felt so I can trim away the felt if I want. And I'm gonna leave this middle part without glue so that I can put my pin there. So you don't want your pin too low or else your thingy will, you know, will go swivel down. You might want it a little more towards the top. So I'm gonna at least leave this part without glue. And then the rest, it just put enough glue so that it'll stick, but you don't want it oozing out all over the place and kind of making a mess. It really doesn't take all that much and you can feel it like if you try and needle felt after um, onto where you have glue you can feel it in there so you might like to use hot glue you might be an e6000 or whatever I don't really like the smell of e6000 myself it's a really strong glue so some of you might like to stitch this instead of glue do what works for you for me Aileen's is like an old friend <laughs> always in my studio always getting use and um, if you don't have the very edge edge glued, you can go back and trim this up, you know, if you want or line it with something. So now that you have that in place, you can get your pin back in place. And the pin backs, I do prefer to sew rather than glue so that they stay. Um, yeah, there we go. And somehow I have to find the thread that I brought. <laughs> get everything ready and then I can't find it once I start moving stuff around. Uh, be right there. Okay, here we go. Okay, so just to sew this really, really easy actually. And I've made a mess of my string. Uh, any old thread, use your quilting thread. Use your, this happens to be a polyester thread. Um, that I used for a very durable project. Now make sure your pin back is right side up uh, so that if you if it has an up, this one, like I said, it has this little necklace. What do you call that? Somebody knows. I don't know what to call it. Um, you could have run your thread underneath your uh, felt first if you wanted. I'm just gonna start it right here and try and get that uh, not to be underneath the pin so that I can't see it. I'll see if I can do that. I probably should have done that better. But I like to go in, I'm going to go in this circle, and you got to open it, but it does kind of get in your way. I like to go in from each side, so I'll go in from the top. I know this is fiddly, y'all. Thanks for your patience. In from the top a few times, and then in from the bottom a few times also. And then I'll try, oh, necklace bail, thank you. The non-jeweler says, what is that thing called? Bail, thank you. Um, uh, Southpaw Studio 21 says she likes Fabri-Tac. Well, I don't know if that's a she, but Southpaw Studio 21, oh yes, I see your face. Uh, likes Fabri-Tac, very good. Whatever you like to use for this type of project, so notice we're just going to go in from the top a few times and then we'll go in from the bottom a few times and you'll do that into uh, both the holes and then I like to terminate the the knot somewhere underneath this little bar or tie a knot and um, tie a knot and then terminate the thread underneath the bar because you really don't want to see it. Now if you have a tag, if you're selling these at a show, you might want to attach your tags uh, to your little felt before 
you actually um, put this little felt on. So see now how we're coming up through the hole? Just go underneath. You can swivel this around and come towards where that hole is, just towards it so that you don't have the thread visible after. Now you've gone back through the hole and you can do the same thing we did. I hope I'm on camera. <laughs> so, not that this is difficult, but just in case you want a little help, we're just going through the felt. Okay, uh, Mandy asked, do we still carry the bar pin magnets? As far as I know, we still have them in stock. I've used them on a lot of tutorials, so decided not to bring them in today. We used them for um, some of our other pins. So yes, as far as I know, we still have them in stock, to my knowledge. Um, uh, thank you. Susie says, good idea to leave the area where the pin back goes unglued. Yes, you don't want to have to fight that glue. Um, wouldn't it be easier to put the pin on before? Maybe, but I don't know how I'm going to trim this. And I, so um, it's a good idea. You certainly could, Joan, put the pin on before, but somehow for me, this is just the last thing. And I know then also that I'm going, I feel like I'm going a little bit into the felt piece also, and not just the felt that's sitting on top of it. At least it feels that way. It feels like I'm grabbing some fibers underneath. So now I'm right here. And you can um, maybe come underneath. We will, let's tie a little knot and get it as close as we can. Close my pin. Let's get it as close as we can to the bar. You can do one or two if you want. It doesn't really matter. But I'm gonna get that knot as close as I can. And then I'm gonna take the string under the string, the thread underneath the bar. You can feel yourself just kind of go in and out and come out as close to that little bar as you can. Pull the thread very tight and then trim it off right there at the base of the bar. Just right there. And now it's just going to go right underneath. So now you have your little hedgy, hedgy one and hedgy two, not finished, still rough. Our little lady, not very difficult. Follow the drawing and Mr. Owl um, that we looked at. Ta da! <laughs> That's our project for today, our little fall magnets. I can see that I need to trim uh, the black around my hedgy a little bit, but that'll be easy to do because I didn't put the glue on the wool felt, the black felt. I put it on Mr. Hedgehog. So uh, would these be too heavy for a magnet? Vicki, I don't think so. Just test a strong magnet. So how you test a magnet is here, uh, you can pin the felt onto the back of your piece with the magnet underneath. Um, it's really more about the magnet being strong enough. So just choose a really strong magnet. So if you're sticking it to the refrigerator or if it's a magnet that you wanna wear, just test the strength of your magnet first by pinning the felt in place. Oh good, I'm so glad you all like them so much. So maybe some of you who haven't well felted before will give a try and wet felt your own fabric for this project. It's really super easy, um, non-threatening, fun, great toe in the water project and um, I can't wait to see what you all come up with so here's what you want to do is if you sh if you make them please do tag us on Instagram so that we can see them and share them hopefully we have a community page on our website where we like to share what people make but we also publish them in our newsletter and then of course we have our Facebook group where people hang out all week and share the most inspiring projects of all levels from all over the world. We just love seeing what you make. Um, they go way beyond what we share on Wooly Wednesday. And if you're ready for something a little more advanced, we have an online school called feltingtutorials.com. We have constantly have new classes coming out there and uh, we have some really exciting projects for like your next level, whether it's wet felting or whether it's needle felting. There's so much you can learn to do. So I see, oh look, we finished even like an early time today. So I hope that you have fun making yours and I'm gonna look for Miss Anne, uh, who should, she's, I'm sure she's busy working. Um, we're going, she's been writing down some names uh, for our prizes today for everyone who's been participating. Uh, so Kathy says, does this, does this lady look angry or is it me? Kathy, she's not angry. She's meditating, I promise. <laughs> I promise.
mom is she's not angry. <laughs> but you can make yours look happier if you want. It's so fun. Uh, so somebody, Judy says, the backing is fully felted, so you can't needle felt onto it. You can needle felt onto the wool felt. You certainly could. I don't know what I'm missing there. Um, I've put out the call for prizes, y'all. I want to see if there's any questions before we sign off. Um, Donna is still waiting for her kit uh, for wet felting. She says it should be there tomorrow. That's awesome. Oh, can't you needle felt the backing so the pin on first? Oh, right. No, Joyce. Uh, this, yeah, this wool felt, you, you, you can't really needle felt the backing, but keep in mind, I mean, you can needle felt onto it, but keep in mind anything you needle felt to it is going to stick through the other side. We already had that and it looks untidy like this guy. So you don't want it to look untidy and you can't needle felt just from this into that. There's not enough fibers from the backing to adhese with this fiber, design fiber on top. So use some other methods, sewing or gluing is my recommendation. And oh, look, Fairy Anne is here with prizes. Yay, thanks for, <laughs> Anne, thanks for saving us. Absolutely. <laughs> Anne, what did you bring to give away? Alrighty, so today we've got some supplies perfect for making today's projects. We're gonna give you some beautiful fiber here based off of our MC1 Fall goodie. And then you're gonna get a wool felt sheet to make your apostrophe and a couple of pin backs. A sweet deal. That's yeah. just for free, just for playing with us today. Okay, so we're <laughs> gonna draw some names. All righty. Names, 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 <laughs> names. I'm gonna find one. Okay, who do you have? I Where's have Sandy? Annie Woody. <laughs> nice. And I have Tara Lee. Congratulations, gals. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for playing with us today. We hope you have fun making your fall pins. We can't wait to see them. And uh, we'll be back next week with a halloween -y project. Ooh. Yeah, it's time. And then we're going to do a lot of Christmas projects this year. We've decided. Okay, y'all. <laughs> thank you so much. We hope you have a great day. Take good care of yourselves, and we'll see you in the group. Until next time, bye. Thank bye. you.